Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk about the Diablo 4 first season mechanic, my thoughts on it, and potentially my concerns. Uh, so before I go ahead and jump into a little bit of text here, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys this image that we're going to be talking about and referring to. So I just snipped this off of their live stream. And essentially, we're going to have four big things we're talking about here. So this over here is going to be your season journey, I believe. Um, so your season journey is essentially what is going to be um, kind of like your season journey, I guess, in Diablo 3, where there are numerous things that you can complete. And as you complete them, you will gain rewards. Um, now, everything here should be free to my knowledge, so it's not like you have to pay extra for this stuff. Um, this over here is the Battle Pass. The Battle Pass as well has a lot of free stuff. Uh, and on top of the free stuff, there is a paid version for the Battle Pass. However, it is 100% only cosmetic. Then we have down over here, Season Blessings. Um, I don't remember if Season Blessings are tied to the Battle Pass or the uh, season journey. Sorry, these are a lot of things for me to keep up with, but basically it's something you will just acquire as you play through the game. And these seem to have account wide progression, which is kind of cool. And then the last thing is the actual league mechanic, which uh, I believe they have called uh, malignant something, which are basically going to be to an extent kind of like legendary um, aspects, but you can put them in your accessories and more so from what people have, or what they explain, some of them are very, very strong. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about it and get started. So on the 18th of July, we also get a massive balance patch. The balance patch has nothing to do with the new season content. It is a literal balance patch. I actually did not expect this was going to happen because we got a pretty decent sized patch like a week ago, although I didn't feel it was that crazy. So I was really happy to see that this is a thing that's coming up. Uh, I myself really want to play a Druid, more so I want to play a Pulverized Druid, and I really have like a new way of playing it. Uh, and I'm very excited to see if this affects me in any way. Just in general, I'm a big fan of, of, of patches, right? Everybody loves new stuff. They stated that it will be a very big patch. So I am, again, very excited for that. Um, season one officially starts on the 20th of July. Uh, we're also getting new legendary aspects and we're getting new unique items. So both of these could potentially lead to different builds, new builds, stronger builds, etc. Right. Again, new stuff to build around um, the new season mechanic. So the new season mechanic is basically finding these right here. Sorry, there's not really much to show. This is really all they showed. Uh, and essentially, the way it's going to work is when you encounter an elite, I don't know if it's every elite, you know, I don't have exact all the info here, but basically when you encounter an elite, they will sometimes have like this extra border looking thing where they're stronger. And when you kill them, there'll be a little interactable uh, thing you can click on. And when you interact with it, um, it'll, I think, respawn the elite with a pack. And then I don't know if they have a chance to drop this, but it has something to do with that. Um, and these, what's important to note about these is they have their own item power, so they're going to scale with like your world tier and stuff. But more importantly, they have colors associated to them. And this is something I don't know how I feel about because there are colors associated to them and there will now be colors on your jewelry. And you can only put, for example, a red one in a red jewelry. My concern is you can already blow 100 million gold rerolling for your perfect ring, for an example. What if you don't get the right color and thus you have to now farm a new you know, four property ring, whatever, five property ring. I forgot, you know, how, how it works in Diablo 4. Um, and then trying to get the, like, the specific color on that as well. That just seems like it's, in, in PoE terms, layering with extra RNG. However, they did also say that you can technically somewhat target farm certain colors with a new thing that's coming out. Um, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but I think you can kind of run, like, a miniature dungeon. Um, and inside that miniature dungeon, you can kind of target what color malignant heart you want i don't know if that affects like the power that um is inside it as well but something that they're kind of like aiming us toward but again more importantly these only go in your three accessory slots um so that would be ring ring amulet and they have three different colors on them so there's also something else and this is the um malignant tunnel is the one i was talking about where you kind of go in like that little miniature dungeon thing so 
there's a total of 32 different malignant powers. And again, I, I think they said that uh, there are some that are like global, so they go in any color or it's the piece of gear. I'm pretty sure they said uh, there is a specific malignant power that works for all the colors. Then there is a scroll of amnesia that comes out. I thought they said you get one of them from, I, I don't know if it's, again, the season journey or the battle pass. Um, I, I'm not sure how else to acquire them. What the scroll of amnesia is, is it's a full respect to your character, including Paragon. I'm guessing they want to add a new way to respect your Paragon. They just haven't really committed to it. So they're giving this. I'm pretty sure they talked about having a new boss, although they did not specify whether or not the boss appears at end game or if it's a mid game or exactly what it is. So I'm not really sure about this. And then another thing to highlight is that uniques can now drop in Helltide chests prior they were just unable to. There's also some more changes happening as well. These are just kind of the big ones they talked about. I know they talked about saying something with um, something about Nightmare Dungeon Rewards. So again, more stuff to come. This is kind of just what we have right now. I do have two concerns still with the game. Honestly, I have more, but let's just talk about the big one. For me, it's the gearing situation. Endgame gearing is the exact same. So once you're able to go to World Tier 4... You can officially get the best in slot gear for the most part. I don't really know how this is going to work, right? Because for me, I lost interest at like level 85, level 90. I mean, sure, we've got more stuff to do this go around. So I'm pretty excited for that. But I just want to see if at some point they're going to address this. I know that, you know, it's not always good for video game developers to balance around the 0.1 percentile of players. Um, but I would imagine that regardless if you play the game... 20 hours a day or if you play the game you know an hour a day you still reach the same situation where when you hit world tier 4 you could go out and kill an elite mob get an item level 803 piece and you're done for ever right i mean not literally but you got you get what i mean if you if you've experienced this before so this is still something I, i'm curious about on how they're doing it um We'll see. And then the other problem is since storage is kind of a big problem right now, I'm really curious where these malignant hearts go. It would be a damn shame if we have to throw those inside our stash tab, which already is so small. It's already fighting for all the codex powers, not the codex, but the legendary aspects and everything else. So I'm really hoping malignant hearts get their own storage, but I don't really think that's going to happen. And that's pretty much about it. So the last thing we'll... we'll Go ahead and skim through and, and look at this a little bit more so i'm pretty happy for a number of reasons here um they talked about i think i don't know i i think it's this chapter one here the the season journey giving you big experience uh it may be something else but i'm pretty sure this when you complete it gives you an experience boost so two things i'd like to talk about here i would say a large amount of us i know i am uh, are going to be skipping the campaign on the season start um main reason nobody not, not a lot of people want to do it all over again uh, I've actually leveled two characters, so I have like a 90-something druid on the regular one, and then uh, I think like mid-70s, maybe, I think so, in hardcore. So on my hardcore character, I skipped the campaign because I didn't really want to do it again, and I personally had a blast leveling through just like Renown. I know that's kind of weird because I hate questing normally, but instead of doing the main storyline, the Renown grind is something that I did instead. So now moving on into Season 1. Um, if you guys are not aware of the situation with the Renown, they talked about it like two weeks ago. Basically, we're getting all of our Lila statues, and on top of that, we are getting um, anything that we explored on the map before is being um, applied to our new characters. So we're already going to start with quite a bit of Renown. Something I like about this is instead of me just doing Renown questing, I will have the ability to kind of do this, right? This season journey, which a lot of this will be tied to doing Renown anyway. So it's kind of like an accelerated way of leveling. But more importantly, if you notice, you are getting aspects as a reward from here. So I think potentially if any of these are drop only aspects, looks like they might just be codex. I'm not sure. I think that this could definitely help enhance some of the leveling experience that, that people struggle with. When I say struggle, I mean more so getting bored because they can't find what they want. So hopefully this will help us out. Um, then over here, this is kind of something interesting because these are account wide buffs and the account wide buffs seem pretty nice. I mean, bonus experience from monster kills seems pretty nice. Uh, boost to the amount of gold from vendor sales. I kind of like that. I'll be honest. I really wish they 
they made it so gold was majority earned from killing and not necessarily from selling but whatever you know at least we get some gold um boost to the chance of rare materials from salvage a uh, boost to the duration of elixirs is pretty nice boost to the chance of powerful malignant heart drops uh hearts drop after completing the campaign uh, i do believe also they said there were tiers of malignant hearts i don't know exactly how that works so overall i have to say i'm pretty happy um there's more coming out than i originally thought uh, i really didn't think we were going to get a big balance patch on top of all of the stuff we're getting Again, though, one of my big concerns is the end game, and I don't need a crazy a lot of end game, like a crazy ton of it, ton of it. I just want some more desire to keep playing at higher level and make my character scale further. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and of course, you can always catch me streaming live every day at Twitch.tv. But Sundays, although for this uh, season launch, I will also be streaming on Sunday. So we'll be playing Druid, playing some Pulverized Druid. Pretty excited to see, you know, just how the game feels. And then probably a few weeks after that, we've got the PoE League. And we'll most likely be jumping into the new PoE League. So very excited for that as well. Anyway, catch you guys all later. Have a great one.